and Liliana Fertitta with us today. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you, Rena. It's great to be with you. Nice to see you again, Rena. You're Rina. doing a documentary, as I understand, and it's called Beyond Chemo, and it's got some great, great talent and great doctors. So on this episode today, Dr. Seek, we're going to talk a little bit about chemo and, of course, the newer treatments that are better than chemo. Now, what's interesting is, you know, as you and I were chatting a little earlier, chemo is ancient, right? What, from the 1950s? Right. It's been around and, for a very long time. And in terms of how well does chemo work, what, what are the statistics on that? Well, actually, that's a very good question because people think, well, I did this surgery, I did this chemo, I did this radiation, and six months later, a year later, the cancer's all back. So obviously, yeah. we have to understand that surgery is not curative. Chemo and surgery together are not curative or alone. And adding radiation, all three of those are not curative. Because why? Surgery, if you do surgery, the doctor cannot see the microscopic cells. Not to mention that surgery is an injurious, immunocompromising, and emotionally compromising process. Second of all, if you do chemo, the cancer may be receptive to the chemo, so sensitive to the chemo, somewhere between 7 and 40%. So that means there's all these population of cancer cells that the chemotherapy did not get. Then if you do radiation, there are cancers that are not even sensitive to radiation. Some are zero, some are, at the most I've ever seen is 45% because I do special testing to tell me what chemos work, if radiation and or hyperthermia work. So even if you do all three of them, there's not a 100% cure, kill rate. We know that the survival Nixon declared war in cancer in 1970. The survival of cancer is 2.3% published in multiple journals. Okay. The cancer rates are the highest they've ever been. What are we doing? We're not doing what's right. The cure for cancer is prevention. But if you don't prevent and get cancer, surgery, chemo, and radiation may be just first of the three steps that you may need to get control of the cancer. But if you do surgery or chemo or radiation, you must do these other complementary therapies because you have to understand the why, where, when, and how did you get cancer from the beginning. Cancer is caused from a lifestyle and way of eating that you were doing. And if you haven't changed your lifestyle and your way of eating, you still have the same environment for the cancer. That's why the survival rates are still the same. Plus we're living in this outrageously toxic world on multiple levels in our body. And if we don't change the environment and create an anti-cancer head and environment of our body, we're gonna have the same place, same nest. Not to mention, if something is a millimeter in size growing, just one millimeter, that's one pencil line, it starts releasing circulating tumor cells. Surgery, chemo, and radiation does not exterminate or terminate circulating tumor cells. Those are responsible for 95% of metastasis. So they're looking for a new home, nest, or residence. And then if you haven't changed your lifestyle and eating, you have the cancer comes back in a month, in three months, six months, in a year maybe two years, but still you must have a very complete evaluation by a doctor who talks to you about your eating and your lifestyle. If the doctor does not talk to you about eating and lifestyle, then you need to find another doctor because that there isn't a book that abounds on health that doesn't talk about your eating and lifestyle. Not a book. I've never seen a book that doesn't talk about that. Is that correct? And there's thousands of books written and they all say the same thing in a different way. Correct? Well, what happened? Did you know? Yeah, there are thousands of doctors that on a daily basis are telling their patients that there is no link, that they have cancer, but that's fine, they can continue eating whatever the heck they want. And I know that because I've had so many friends who've been touched by cancer. In fact, we lost a, a, a dear friend's daughter to cancer about a year and a half ago. And when I you know, spoke to the parents and I said, so what have you done nutritionally? What are you doing? And she goes, well, the doctor says, 
kids there's nothing to do with that so they've not really changed anything so that poor girl and they kept saying well the doctor says you know it's it's 95 percent success rate because she had one of those cancers that apparent you know leukemia where they say oh it's totally fine if you were going to get cancer this was the best time it's totally reversible she'll have like over 90 percent it did go away and guess what it came raging back and she was gone within six months and the doctors never told her to change her diet or her lifestyle right and the world health organization publishes though why we have cancer eating and lifestyle if you just googled that you would see it so how can that possibly be when it's absolutely exactly. not when your body is a biochemical machine of course it is function exactly. yes exactly. so we we have to change people's minds and doctors need to change though that's exactly it. or as i say you know that's might be harder to change we have to empower people to take charge of their health so that's where dr me thank you for doing this because our goal is to empower people that are listening to take charge of their health and to be able to go into the doctor's office and say, I don't care what you say, I'm changing my nutrition and my lifestyle. And Dr. Hughes, you make such an important point. You know, if your doctor's not talking about it, find another doctor. Yeah, because there are, there are doctors that will talk about it. I know there are because yes. I, I, I hear, I ask patients, I said, no, you just need to find another doctor. But you must combine some of the conventional with the other complementary therapies it might be iv vitamin c it might be hyperbaric it might be lymphatic drainage it might be purification it may be herbs it may be um endo laser it may be um uh different kinds of iv therapies there's all kinds of different ivs that are anti-cancer that are non-toxic to the patient so and these are these are there the scientific validation of all these is everywhere it's not like uh, it's not like it's absent from the internet or the literature. There's PubMed articles on all of these things. So, but we have to figure out what works best for each individual patient. No person is the same. And now some of my patients come to me, they don't want to do surgery or chemo and radiation. They're looking for something completely different. So we, we do find other ways that we can help the patient. Let's talk about options that others have and what's working okay well it, it depends again there is no one set protocol for each patient I would tell you first and foremost what someone puts in their mouth and how they live their life and how we teach them to clean up their body has a lot to do with their outcome and if they shrink their tumor just fasting I tell people it doesn't cost money to fast if you're concerned about money Go on a fast. I told a patient the other day, they need to go on a 30 day fast before they do anything. They had diabetes, cancer, high, all these comorbid it, problems. And I go, just go on a fast before you do anything. They, Cause the doctors jump into surgery, but your hemoglobin A1C is seven. I go, you can't go into surgery with your hemoglobin A1C is seven because that causes increased risk of infection, increased risk of your body not healing. How can you do that? So I was against you jumping into surgery because guess what? You prepare the body for surgery. I do an entire preparation mentally, emotionally, and physically before anyone ever does a surgery. Every doctor should be doing this because the outcome is going to be dramatically different if you prepare the patient on all those levels. If their vitamin D level is low, for example, well, vitamin D influences over 2,000 genes in your body and you have a proper sufficient levels. Let's say you're, you have 10 nutritional deficiencies. How are you going to heal after surgery? So before I even have my patients do surgery, I have them do all of that. They see Liliana. I always tell every single patient, the first two things you're going to do with me, I don't care what it is, is learn how to eat and understand the science of food with Liliana and learn how to resolve emotional conflicts. There's no sense in moving forward if you haven't done those two things. And so and, so, and, 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 and it, you're not bad if you have an emotional complex. You're not a bad person, okay? All of us talking right now have, emotion, have had emotional conflicts, but you want resolution of them, and everybody has them, but it, it's always been taboo if someone says, oh, you have that problem? Well, no, everybody has them, everybody. And it's beautiful when you have re 
all these conflicts resolved and Liliana's an expert at that. But then all the other treatments that we have here, whether it's hyperbaric oxygen, we know that cancer cells thrive in a low oxygen, acidic, sugary environment. So we have to change that. Fasting is good and easy, fast. Obviously getting off sugar and going on a more of a ketogenic eating program. And then we, um, we flood the body with oxygen here. We use hyperbaric, we use ozone, we use oxygen bath, all these things. So we radically are changing the system very well. Now, when we talk about targeted treatments here, we do low dose chemo. We do something called IV salicinium. We have probably 10 other IVs. We do IV artisanate. Artisanate is a cancer, is a herb that kills cancer. We do um, IV uh, salicinium, which is a vegetable glycone that turns that anaerobic cell into an aerobic cell. We do do chemo sometimes. We do low dose chemo using insulin as a Trojan horse to bring the cancer, the, the chemo into the cancer cells, so sparing the healthy cells. Um, we use, we use, now we've just begun using a laser for a cancer. It's an FDA approved German machine that is being used for all different conditions, one of them being uh, cancer. So there's all kind. we use lots of lymphatic drainage. We have an amazing machine that cleans the lymph. Our lymph removes all the garbage out of our body. So there's so many unbelievable ways, but a lot of times people do it when their head is right. It's amazing. It's amazing what can be accomplished. I've had patients, I had a lady with cancer in both breasts, a grapefruit in here and a plum in here. When she went to the procedure that I had her do, which was cryotherapy, the mass in the right breast was gone undetectable. So it can be done. I had a patient fly in from Texas today who refused surgery and chemo and radiation. She says, Dr. Keneally, I have never felt this good in my entire life. Wow. All because I changed just my lifestyle. When I examined her, I felt the breast lump. It was much smaller. So I said, okay, now we're gonna go to the next step. Don't, be, don't let someone fear you in to a process that you feel uncomfortable with. Usually cancer is not an emergency. You have time to take into the information, to get peaceful, to change your lifestyle, to change the way you're thinking about this, to, to re, re, you know, just re-examine your entire life so you can say, look, I need to look at all this, look at all my options and see what's the best avenue. Because most of the time, it's not an emergency unless there's an obstruction. But a lot of doctors tell patients they're gonna die if they don't do this. Well, we didn't learn in medical school how to give someone an expiration date. And by the way, we never learned in medical school to talk like that to a patient.